In the past, we've done a number of different episodes on cooking 18th century uh, items and how easy that is. We thought uh, now would be a good time to uh, step back once again and uh, kind of have a little bit of a reality check about what it was really like for soldiers in the 18th century. For a soldier in the 18th century, food was, was a great concern, a great difficulty. Uh, what would a soldier do with his ration of meat if he didn't have any equipment? What would he do if he didn't have any utensils or even any wood for his fire? By most accounts, uh, the only equipment that was ever issued uh, to soldiers for cooking was the tin cooking pot. And that undoubtedly uh, really restricted the kind of foods or the kind of ways that they would be able to uh, cook their meat ration. This definitely would have restricted the cooking to mostly boiling. Uh, you can imagine just how unskilled these soldiers would have been at uh, cooking meat. In fact, uh, there are period accounts where officers are discussing just uh, how uh, unskilled the soldiers are, the ones that are put in charge of the cooking. Another problem was the condition of the meat that they were given as a ration. The ration was either given as, as uh, fresh meat or salted meat. The salted meat kept for a lot longer, but it also made the, uh, the meat very hard and uh, inedible until it was first soaked really well. The uh, salt was also a problem. Getting salt, the, the uh, British forces went after salt specifically, trying to restrict the amount of salt that the, uh, the colonists were able to get during the war. It became so scarce, it was more scarce than gunpowder. In David DeWitt's book, uh, Founding Foodies, he tells us that early in the war, the British cut off American trade with the Turk Islands, which was the uh, premier supplier of salt to the colonies. And then in 1776, General Howe uh, invaded and took over uh, Long Island, further reducing the colonists' uh, salt supplies and their ability to get salt. General Washington's armies were completely cut off from their supply of coastal salt, and uh, all their reserves were gone. Profiteers began to hoard the salt, and by 1783, the price of salt had raised 16-fold. So it's no wonder when we read accounts like uh, Joseph Plum Martin's journal, where he writes, I strolled into a large yard where was several sawmills and a gristmill. And I went into the latter, thinking it was probable that the dust made there was more palatable than that made in the former. But I found nothing there to satisfy my hunger. But there was a barrel standing behind the door which had some salt in it. Salt was as valuable as gold with the soldiers. I filled my pockets with it and went out. Salt was needed to preserve the meat. So if salt wasn't available, most likely they would have been issued fresh meat. The problem is their fresh meat wouldn't be anything like the aged beef that we are used to when we go to the grocery store today. Uh, their, their cuts would have been very tough meat to start with. And of course the soldiers are given the worst of the cuts available. Excavations at uh, Valley Ford suggest that the soldiers were given cow's feet as their meat ration. There's a great account from uh, Jacob Walter's Napoleonic uh, War Diary uh, where he talks about some of the salt ration that the troops were issued. The, war, uh, the year is 1812. Uh, let's, uh, let's hear what he says. He says, however, we had to prepare our own food from our rationed meat and bread. The meat came from the salted ice pits. There was a rumor that it had been stored from the War of 1807. The condition of the meat made the rumor seem credible since the meat appeared bluish black and was as salty as herrings. It was already tender enough to eat and we boiled it a few times only to draw off the muriatic acid. And then the broth, not being useful for soup, had to be thrown out. So on campaign, Boiling would have been the technique most likely used. And if uh, equipment was lacking, well then it would have been uh, roasting and broiling. Joseph Plum Martin writes about the uh, 1770 campaign. Here we procured a day's rations of southern salt pork, three quarters of a pound, and a pound of sea bread. We marched a little distance and stopped to refresh ourselves. We kindled some fires in the road and some broiled their meat. As for myself, I ate mine raw. So we've taken our salt pork ration today and we're, we're gonna boil it up. Josh wanted one piece that was roasted, so 
He's got one piece roasting and uh, we'll have this later on. 